don't forget to smash that subscribe button or whatever those guys say. Ah, um, I, I really do appreciate the support. Hey, this is Corinne Shalvoy. Welcome to the Training for Ultra podcast. If we could just free ourselves of our perceived limitations and tap into our internal fire, the possibilities are endless. I'll tell you about it when it happened in the race, but to be honest with you, it happened even before the race. It happened in the training. A great cause. Oh, thank you. I respect that, man. So keep doing what you do, it, man. Keep inspiring. For all you kids out there, stay safe and stay strong. Hey, everyone. It's the Training for Ultra podcast. We've got Jurek here. I was physically totally wrecked. I, I had nothing left. I figured I might as well move as quickly as possible towards the finish line if I was going to be moving towards it anyways. How do you even do that? I decided if I could, you know, finish a 50 miler, I could probably run across the country. 100 miles is not that far. Big thank you to you Patreon supporters. Excited to put your name right here. And just, I couldn't do the show without you. And then Exoskin, if you haven't tried them out, just really solid gear. They make socks, toe socks, underwear now, compression bottoms, shirts, hats, sleeves, you name it. And it's all really high tech, really high quality. And I use it in my own races because I truly believe in the product. So if you want to try it out, feel free to use the promo code T, the number 4U20, for 20% off now. It might change over time. It will hopefully be the best code available for you. And I'll put that code right on the screen there for you. But big thank you to Exoskin. Big thank you to you Patreon supporters. And just hopefully you enjoy this episode. All right, I'm excited to have Corinne Shalvoy on for an episode. She's been my athlete model for Exoskin. She does an awesome job. She's done so much work behind the scenes. And honestly, it's like the little times where you're just driving out to a place to set up for a shot where you learn a lot about someone. And I'm like, Corinne, why didn't we record half of our conversations? Because you're a fascinating person. You're an awesome athlete. And You've created a lot of really cool stuff, so thanks for joining me on the podcast. Thank you. You want to shout out your your sponsors? Oh, geez, sure. Let's do it. Sure. Well, I'm an ambassador for Exoskin. Love their products. Love their uh, toe socks in particular, but I wear a lot of their gear in races and in training. Um, swear by the toe socks, so I won't run a long race without wearing those from now on. So highly recommend them. Um, I am working with uh, Solomon as an ambassador as well and have been wearing Solomon's shoes and gear for many years before this, but have been really excited to get to partner with them and learn more about the brand specifically. Um, and also a Squirrel's Not Better athlete. Nice. You don't want to chafe. No, chafing's bad. Really quick, I want to hear about your Solomon experience in Moab. That seemed kind of epic. Like, yeah. I know we overuse that word, but... No, cool. it, it, it was. I think it's an appropriate term for it. Um, yeah, so I got an, a huge opportunity. I was selected out of, I think it was like 600 plus applicants um, to be one of 16 athletes that got to go out to Moab for four days of uh, running with some of the huge legends in our sport uh, in Courtney DeWalter and Max King and Jamil Curry. There were also some additional Solomon athletes I got to know there who were super cool. So we ran together. We, uh, I learned from them a number of different things. We did some workshops, like actual running technique, et cetera, but also learned a lot about content, social media, et cetera, um, and just got to know them as people. It was awesome. It was just a, a huge... Uh... Wait, Max King, Courtney DeWalter, <laughs> Jamil, they're like normal people? They're human? <laughs> they are, Absolutely. Totally, uh, what was totally what was your big takeaway? Like, was there one lesson where you're like, I'm using that in a race because that was like super helpful to learn? So, yeah, I actually got a really good tip I plan to use um, from Courtney at Leadville this year, um, just because I haven't worked with pacers and crew before. And, you know, her advice was just to tell them what I'm 
what I need from them and to be very straightforward with it and probably tell them that before we get to the race. Like, I'm going to tell you what I need from you. I'm going to tell you if I want you to be in front of me, behind me, et cetera. And I think that's huge because I've, I've worked with a pacer once before and I didn't really, you know, take that initiative. And I think it'll be helpful for me in this upcoming. I mean, I'm, I'm crewing and pacing bad water. Yeah. We don't have to go over whether the pacer should be in front or behind. Like, they're not ever allowed to be in front. Wow. So when you're given that chance, be thankful. Yeah. That's a whole different world I never knew about. But sure. um, let's dive into your background. Where are you from? Are you yeah. Have you been like running since five on the trails and just wild woman or? Um, I mean, I guess kind of in a way. I did grow up in Uray, Colorado. I was born and raised there uh, in the San Juan Mountains. Which is an aid station at Hard Rock. It is an aid station at Hard Rock. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know it was an aid station at Hard Rock for the entire time I grew up there. Um, probably until I was in my in my teens. But yeah, I'm I'm fourth generation. It's a tiny, tiny town, southwest Colorado, like a thousand people. Um, but my parents and grandparents both grew up there as well. So fourth generation. Yeah. Like so your family founded you Ray basically. Let's put it this way the, the dra- park is called Flynn Park. That's my grandfather great grandfather's name and his no his kidding. last name. He is because he owned that piece of land. And sold it for some ridiculous, who knows, $4,000 or something like that uh, many, many years ago. But just recently, in the last probably 10 years, they named the park after him. Um, And I was very close to my grandmother on my mom's side. So um, that means a lot to me. But yes, I have lots of aunts and uncles in town and it's home. I mean, I feel like we're in the car driving to our shot. Like we, (laughs) I I was shocked when you, um, when you told me that i had no idea and so i mean tell me when you got into running was it like a high school middle school type thing like classic middle school thing yeah i um so growing up we did a ton of camping fishing i I mean my dad pretty much lived in the mountains he he kind of like retreated to the mountains when he was a teenager to kind of get away from his huge family and his life and spent a lot of time out in the mountains. So he kind of passed that along to, to us, I, myself and my brother and sister, we grew up, you know, doing these hikes that now are just so memorable, you know, outside of Silverton and every year and go with our cousins and build forts in the woods and stuff like that. And so I started, I mean, running by kind of following him down the mountain, I guess. Um, It was also in our family. I have a uncle who's fairly, fairly well-known in the sport. His name's Rick Trujillo. He's my dad's brother, um, kind of a pioneer of ultra running himself. So I knew about it, but I didn't, I didn't really, uh, run competitively until, well, middle school, I ran track. That was kind of my first foray into the sport. Foray in Ure? Foray in Ure. Um, and so when, I mean, it sounds like these hikes were when you say just going for a hike, yeah. you're in Eureka, Colorado. <laughs> yeah. They're like straight up, yeah. straight down. Yeah. Like what was what was like the memorable experience growing up on one of those? Was it like Corinne carry the grill? Like <laughs> No up grills. A, no grills. Like a... So so Highland Mary Lakes outside of Silverton was our annual kind of camping trip. We usually went with our cousins. Um, my cousins <laughs> are younger than me and I do remember one one year. My little cousin Leah, I think, I think it was her cat at the time, brought her kitten. So the kitten hiked, you know, the three and a half miles. Who knows how much vert? I don't even remember, but it's it's all we knew. So it was, I'm sure it was fairly steep, um, up to probably around 11, 12,000 feet. And then we would camp up there, you know, and go build forts and just hang out at the lake and fish. And I mean, we could talk all about you, Ray. I guess. Yeah. Like, what is it like? It's at 8,000 feet? It's just under eight. It's about 7,700. Were you born in Uray? Uh, I was born in Montrose, 45 okay. minutes away. Okay. Yeah. Um, There's not really a major hospital in Uray, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> There's I not actually, really a major grocery I, store. I haven't, like, <laughs> actually stopped there. I, I mean, I, I volunteered at Hard Rock one year, mm-hmm. and I, I drove through. I, I should have been at that aid station. I just, yeah, I haven't had the opportunity yet. I, yeah. I definitely will. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful. When did you actually start hitting the trails? Was it college? Was it high school where you were running? 
Well, I ran you a little bit. On, I did run a little bit on the trails for training in in high school. I did track and cross country. So, um, I mean, I ran the infamous Jim Brown Hill, which is the first very. It's it's right outside of Uray to the south. Uh, it's the very first part of Imogene, and it's it's a road, but it's very steep and. Um, you know, my dad always would tell me that you train on that, you're going to do well at races because it's, it's hard. Um, and like Oak Creek Trail, just um, above town, I'd run on that a bit. But, you know, growing up middle school and high school, I, I didn't really run specifically on the trails. I'd just run on the back roads of town or, you know, it was a combination of kind of dirt and pavement. And when, I mean, were you finding a love for running early on? Or were you doing this just so that you were successful at races? I mean, yeah, I definitely be honest. Yeah, I, no, okay. I definitely loved loved running from the first time that I did it. I had, um, I had, you know, pretty good success being like going out in the mile and racing around the track and you know winning a race. It was like, oh, I, I can do this. I can do well at this. But I did a lot of sports. I played volleyball and basketball, um, and ran track and cross country and was in the band. <laughs> I was a cheerleader. When you're in your ray, you do everything. So you play basketball and then for the guys so you, basketball game. You scored game, the touchdown, <laughs> then you ran then over you and got you go cheerlead the... <laughs> for, the, for the guys team. There's not enough people. So uh, I loved basketball and volleyball as well. I, I, I mean, I, but I liked running. I was the best at running. So it became a little bit of a, um, it, it also then started to carry the most pressure as I got older and into high school. Um, junior year, almost just stopped doing it altogether because I, I, I'm kind of a late bloomer. So I don't think maturity wise, I was there mentally to be able to prepare or to be able to handle kind of what was, you know, going on in like, you know, state track meets and things like that. Um, and so it was a lot of pressure. I questioned whether I was doing it for myself or, you know, for being a Trujillo runner, you know, that kind of thing. And I had to go through a process of, do I really like doing this? And is this something that I'm doing for myself? Did you end up running senior year? I did. Yeah. Ran senior year. Um, never won a state championship. Got second in the 800 and... Got second in the 800? Yeah. In Colorado? Well... Tiny school. <laughs> so D, what is it? D? Oh, geez. I think oh, we're really? like D, five seven? A. Like, yeah, we we had to <laughs> go college. up to three A because we were so small. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it was I was decent, and um, I think it wasn't until going through that kind of do I like this? Do I not? Doing it in college, but just for fun, not really competitively, um, and through that whole process, eventually, kind of coming back around to like this is this is something I do for myself that I love to do. And I want to just keep exploring it. So you ran just for fun throughout college. Yeah, I ran for DU, but um, okay. it was a very, very small team. I was not competitive at all. Um, and most of the time we were just kind of training for the off season cross country team. Um, that was very good. You know, they're like, had like USA ski team coaches and, they were our our cross country running coaches too. So in a way, I actually learned a lot from running in college because they taught us things like they didn't take it too seriously. So they taught us things like, okay, just go out and run for an hour today. That's all you need to do. Don't worry about the pace. And looking back on it, like I mean, they know what they're talking about. They're they're good coaches, and we would we would time trial and we would do speed work as well. But I think I learned a little bit more of a laid back approach to it through their way of coaching, Trond and Knut Nystad, twins from Norway. <laughs> I mean, what what other lessons did you learn there? It sounds like you probably picked up on quite a few things looking at <laughs> yeah, yeah. your races these days. Yeah, I mean, on the weekends, go out, you know, run for two or three hours in the mountains. It's something that I do to this day, you know, like um, I think – that's how I train, by the way. <laughs> nice. I, it's like, ah, uh, I feel like just having fun today, like yeah. most days, actually. Yeah. Try, it should be. I, I, I still feel bad for Matt Daniels trying to coach me. <laughs> I just, like, the first seven runs I went on, I botched every workout. Like, it was a disaster. <laughs> um, I figure but out. But there's, the there's a lot to be said, just, like, consistency, right? Oh, yeah. Huge. Having fun. Absolutely. Wanting to go out. Yep. 
for sure, for sure. I almost went to Adams and Western and ran for them. Um, we were, I was looking at those schools and coming from Uray, uh, I wanted to go to a big school, quote unquote, big school in the big city of Denver. Uh, and I think, I think it's a, it was a blessing in disguise, you know, definitely feel like I could have burned out. I think my dad interviewed with, or spoke with some of those coaches. They talked about people running through stress fractures and just it wouldn't have been a good environment. Hundred so. mile weeks at race pace. Probably. Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully a lot of that's changed, but yeah, definitely glad that I kind of took So you a graduate, way. do you do you move into Colorado initially and that's what like Kindles trails like did you move to California? I'm trying to remember so, us talking about that. So uh, once I graduated from college, I um, met my now husband. We were together for a couple months and decided to move to Atlanta for his job. Okay. And so we lived in Atlanta 2005 to 2007. And I was running just kind of casually out there um, and then got him into running. And uh, and then we came back to Colorado. We did move to California in 2013 for a year to the Bay Area, um, and then back to Colorado. So I've I've we'll have Graham on. Yeah, he's an exoskin underwear model. <laughs> so bar your bar's high here. And yeah, yeah. How's it feel to be married to an underwear model? Um, no, <laughs> feels amazing. I mean, it's like bucket list stuff here. Dreams come true. Um. And so were you converting your background into events initially or like tell me when you signed up for your first organized race, like so, actual like marathon, yeah, half marathon? Yeah. yeah. After school, um, I <laughs> – this is a funny story. So Graham, Graham and I were in Atlanta together and um, he proposed and we were going to get married the following year. And, um, he had been a smoker at that time. And most people never would have ever imagined that about him. And he's probably going to hate me for saying, it. <laughs> but he'd been smoking for 10 years. Like no kidding. Pretty solid, you know, three quarters of a pack a day kind of thing. And I said, Hey, I don't like your smoking <laughs> and I, don't, I'm not, I love you, but I don't want to marry you unless you quit smoking. <laughs> I kind of gave, so him, a, one year I gave like, him a little bit of an ultimatum what? and he said, hey, I have to do something else then. And I said, OK, well, then we are training for a marathon. And he had never uh, he had never run more than six miles at a time. So we started with the six miles and every weekend built it up. I love 10K distance. I, <laughs> I swear it's like base level. Like if you can do a 10K yeah. regularly, yeah. you can get ready for 200 miles if you want. Sure. Sure. He's uh <laughs> So you guys sign up for Atlanta? So we signed up for the Atlanta Marathon. Oh, you put him through the ringer. Well, I didn't I didn't know what I was getting into either cuz I uh I'd never run a marathon and you know, it's Atlanta, it's flat, right? Not the case. <laughs> it's a sea level almost. <laughs> it's a it's a very hilly <laughs> marathon. So, but it was super fun. We trained for that together and we ran it uh right before we got married in 2007. So, so did he quit smoking to train for this marathon? Yeah, kind of as part of it. Good for you and him. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I would never have guessed Graham smoked, ever. Most people don't. <laughs> it's his wild side. <laughs> it's a bad boy side. It's this, the underwear model. This is side. like how we hook and tease for like having Graham on yeah, for an episode. Exactly. exactly. Um, and so how, how did the marathon go? So the marathon went well. It was the hardest thing I'd ever done at the time. I felt like my legs were going to fall off, you know, 18, 19 miles in, the infamous 20-mile wall. Um, just joint pain like I'd never had before. Kind of, I mean, pounding on the roads is its own beast. So it went well. I think we ran a whopping like four hours, 20 minutes, and uh, we were it, happy with that. You ran together the we entire did. time? We ran together the whole time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. What what a romantic story. <laughs> um, we suffered together. And and so were you signing up like quickly afterwards or was it like recovering, wedding planning? So yes. Like, I want to hear when you got into trails. Real running. Real running. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're so bad. Um yeah, so we finished that. It was kind of like kind of a one and done. I mean, we just focused on getting married after that. 
we moved back to Colorado. And um, Graham said, I, I like this running stuff, but I would like it more if it was in the mountains. And he is a skier. He has always loved the mountains, you know, kind of a climber or mountaineer, not, not rock climbing, but like mountaineering. And so he decided that he was going to sign up for the Imogene uh, race in Uray. And I said, I will never run Imogene. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, was he like just like. He was just kind of all in. He was like, I'm. Like, I wanna, we're going to be in town. I'm like, I might this. as well let's do go, this. You can visit Imogene. your family. Yeah. And... Yeah. He cool. just wanted to do it. He just got really interested in the race itself and was wanted to train for it. And, um, and then two years after he did it, I did it because. You had to beat his time. No, I actually don't think I've beat his time, but I've run it three times since. So, yeah, it uh, it carried a little bit of uh, family pressure. My <laughs> uncle Rick founded the race. I'm pretty sure he had the record on it for many years. Like at that, I guess now I was a shell boy, so I could just pretend I wasn't a Trujillo. But um, but yeah, I had to wrap my head around it a little bit before I actually deciding to run it and also thought it was super difficult. I mean, it is. It's a very, it's a very hard race. And coming from running flat most of the time, it was not something that intuitively I was like, oh, that sounds fun. What, I, I mean, that. for a listeners, like, what is she talking about? Yeah. So, oh, you want, what's, what's yeah, the Imogene? Yeah, just 101. Yeah. <laughs> Imogene 101. Yeah. So the Imogene Pass Run is a race from the town of Uray to the town of Telluride goes over Imogene Pass, which is a four-wheel drive uh, road. And uh, you start in Uray about 7,700 feet. You climb up. It's 10 miles up and seven miles down. And you get up to 13, I should know, but 13.2 or something Mm -hmm. like that at the top of the pass. And then it's pretty much straight down into town, seven miles steep downhill um, into the town of Telluride. Sounds very similar to Pikes Peak in terms of, like, probably course profile, right? Yes, with which with much fewer switchbacks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's 17 miles total, so it's it's a little short, a little but... shorter, but yes, very uh, higher. Yeah, pretty high altitude, and just a lot of relentless climbing and then descending. And did that actually get you excited about more trail running, or was it the training process where you're like, oh, maybe I throw in a 25 mile race here to get ready for that seven. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't really, I don't think I ran super long in preparation for that. I mean, it's before I worked with a coach. We just would go up and try to get high altitude stuff. We'd run um, some of, around some of the 14ers. And I did enjoy the the train for it, um, but I, I still don't love climbing. It's something I continue to work on figuring out how to do it well. Um, but I love descending. We'll, so. we'll redact that so no one from you, Ray, hears that comment. <laughs> that, I, that I don't um, love climbing. <laughs> That's okay. He, he might get stopped and not allowed back into you, yeah. Ray, I'm being by honest. like the local sheriff. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> you probably know. I know. It's probably a relative. I, I totally know. <laughs> I can get my way out of that. Um, and like, when did you find yourself on Ultra Sign Up? When did you go a little bit bigger beyond your your local comfort zone. So I think that around the Imogene when it was first when I was first running it is around the time we started like somebody told us about this app called Strava and we're like, Oh, that's cool. Let's sign up for that. And then Dangerous. It just <laughs> snowballed from there. Um, you know, I then I was really having a lot of fun at these trail races that were shorter distance, you know, between ten K and half marathon or maybe like 25 K that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, I, I just was enjoying it and kind of kept doing it. I, you know, I had a couple of kids in between. Yeah. Tell me about that. (laughs) I mean, I mean, seriously, I think your running's probably improved vastly over those years. Um, tell me about that because I mean, it's, it's in my book. We, my wife and I had a ton of trouble having our second child Mm -hmm. And the aftermath of all of that, very difficult. And I mean, it sounds like you have two boys. I do. They've been over to to play with my two boys. Yep. Uh, I mean, easy process for you? Um, 
I can't imagine not. having a single child ever being easy, but I don't know that it's anyone would ever call it easy. I had pretty easy pregnancies um, until after my second pregnancy. That's a whole story. But I, you know, I got lucky with with pregnancies. I got lucky with uh, you know getting pregnant. Actually, actually, so Dash, my my sons are nine and six, Stowe and Dash, and uh, after. Um, after Stowe is born, what we were getting, we were trying to get pregnant with Dash and I actually ended up having a miscarriage, which I found out at the time is so, so common. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. No one ever talks about it. No one ever talks about it. Um, You think you're the only one right at the time? Yeah. We were living in Hollywood in San Fran and it was super difficult. I mean, yeah, just, it was a crazy thing to go through. It was very emotional, but you know, after that, we did get pregnant with my second son, and uh, everything was fine. Had him. Uh, he was fine. And then uh, about three or four hours later, I found myself in the emergency room uh, with uh, my placenta had not fully delivered, so I was having uh, major bleeding and uh, ended up having it's to— deadly, right? Yeah. It's, it's the way that women would die in childbirth 50 years ago. I mean— yeah, it was not something that I was at all prepared for. It was very traumatizing for the whole family. I mean, a uh, very difficult time for Graham. And, you know, so I'm I'm lucky to be alive and uh, yeah. <laughs> blessed that I have two healthy boys. Did, did that experience change your perspective on life for yourself, but then change perspective, even going down to the level of running? Yeah. And like your pain thresholds and that sort of stuff. Like when you're running and something hurts and you're like, I've experienced pain. I almost died. Like I was a few hours away from death. Like, yeah, I I think it does. I think it does. I think maybe I would think about that a little bit more, you know, years ago when it was closer to when I had actually had, uh, had the kids, but I do think you can draw on that and more of, I would say more than overcoming the pain because it's such a different pain. I think that um, what I take away from it is is just an appreciation for being able to do it and an yeah. appreciation for life in general. Um, yeah, it's a scary thing to to have an experience like that. And it's hard when you get caught up in the in the day to day and the minutia and the busyness to pay attention. But it's important to just always appreciate that. I mean, when it, yeah, when it comes to like, oh, dude. Solomon share that photo like it, it just puts things in perspective I find like big events like that just yeah. such great perspective on like what's Absolutely. important what's not yep um and Solomon did share actually Air, Air Vipa shared a photo <laughs> of you uh recently I, I remember seeing that one and this is someone you should follow on Instagram and social media as much as possible I'm dead serious she has <laughs> awesome races coming up um, tell me progression in terms of running. Did you go out and do more marathons and then leap into ultra running or tell me about that transition. And then like you, you, I think you run for air Viper now. I'm not mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. you seem to take a liking to their races and deserts. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button or whatever those guys say. Ah. Um, I really do appreciate the support. Big thank you to Patreon supporters. Couldn't do this without you guys. So most importantly here, don't forget to enjoy your training. Have a great week. I'll leave you Patreon supporter names here at the end. Have a great week. Thanks.